Hi kids, welcome back to my channel, Monkey Wrench. I'm Kelly, the monkey with the wrench. Today, we're starting a project I was hoping I didn't have to do. And that is, we're gonna have to work on this Gravely 34Z. You've seen a few videos on the channel. Uh, if you haven't, you can go back and watch those to get an update. But basically what happened was, um, there was a failure in the oil filter which caused it to rupture and as a result of that all the oil came squirting out like a horror movie while the previous owner was riding it she has i don't know five six eight acres i don't remember uh so long stretches and with headphones on and just riding around she didn't realize it didn't have any oil in it until it started sounding and feeling funny it ended up uh, that one of the one of the magnetos went bad and I put the magneto on it got the, the that cylinder to fire back up and it seemed like everything was okay I put a new oil filter on I couldn't find any cracks in the block and it seemed like maybe we got lucky but we didn't I have pressure washed this entire thing it was caked completely in oil and uh, I'm sorry I already have part of it apart but what happened was uh, I got it running and then I went ahead and cut my backyard and my front yard and everything was working fine um, and then I parked it and I noticed that there was oil everywhere and it had leaked so I actually removed the engine from the machine and pressure washed everything the machine the motor everything to make it spotless then i put it back on the machine and i didn't hook up the pto or anything uh, i just bolted a couple of bolts down to the frame so it would sit still hooked it back up filled it back up with oil and i ran it for 30 minutes and it sounded good and it didn't smoke and there weren't any issues but what i started seeing was oil along the top here hang on a call is coming in i gotta decline uh, i started seeing oil along the top here and it was bubbling and sizzling and i wasn't sure where it was coming from i was checking the entire motor down the sides across the bottom and it just seemed like it was coming up here and puddling up here okay and then after about 30 minutes and i stood here and watched it and listened to it so i didn't screw it up too bad all of a sudden a wave of oil just started coming right out there between the engine and this is your uh your pump reservoir and it just started flowing like a lava flow so there's only a few seals on this thing we have an upper seal and then we have a likewise lower seal on the other end and you have to remove the engine to, you know to deal with those but as I was going through this whole thing trying to figure out two things come to mind first thing this is an oil filter system and you'll see this later um, this is actually going to be a series of videos I will do one specifically on this oil filter system what happens is there's a filter inside of there and there's a bunch of like a maze gunnels and it takes that high pressure and it makes it go through a maze to slow it down and there's a filter in there I think the filter got clogged and it built up pressure and the weakest point for it to release would have been the oil filter so that's our first problem the second problem is and i don't think that it's an issue is where the case the crankcase comes open you crack it in half to get to everything inside and you'll see that later as well um but i didn't see oil coming from anywhere around there but that doesn't you know you can't see everything it could it could be leaking from anywhere clearly it's coming out of here which means it's coming out of this oil filter system up here this this case um, so basically what I was trying to decide was whether I was going to pull this thing apart and rebuild it or if I was gonna call it a paperweight and then I realized there was another issue and this is one that I searched for yesterday for a few hours online couldn't find anything about it i don't know how well you'll be able to see that but if you look at the black ring around there this crankshaft 
is wobbling. You see how right here, when I push that direction, it closes in, then it pulls away. The crankshaft is wobbly. Now, that probably happened when she ran it without oil. Um, I don't know what else is going on with it. We're going to tear it apart and take a look at the inside. It ran good. It didn't smoke. It didn't make noise. Uh, I thought it was all good until I got off of it and looked in the back and saw the oil. So, I'm hoping the pistons are still good. The jugs are still good. The heads are good. Everything's good. I'm not really expecting any major damage inside. But with that crankshaft being wobbly, it's a paperweight. Unless, on certain machines... <clears throat> There is a press fitting. Uh, some might call it a bearing. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I can't even, I'm on some medicine right now. So I can't even think. Um, it's not a bearing. It's more of a, a, a press fitting. Um, I'll think of it later. The word for it. I'm having a complete brain fart. But this is what it is. All right, that's the part number on this particular machine. And basically what it is, it's a sleeve, it's a bearing, a press fitting that goes underneath of this black oil seal, which has to come out, and then this is pressed in there. And what I, ha what I think happened was that it was spinning, okay, and that it was low on oil, and as a result of that, it damaged this press fitting right here this bearing why can't i think of the what um, hang on i literally had to stop the camera and think for a minute this bushing okay and i believe when i take this apart and i take that crankshaft out i believe i'm gonna find that the old existing bearing is worn really bad so this gets pressed into the, the crankcase should take up the space so any oil that's coming out here as a result of that wobble, okay, this is going to stop that. Then this is going to seal that up. And that's going to take care of the upper. We're going to put in a lower oil seal. And basically, I also bought, um, I bought the regular crank cake, the, the, the crank case gasket. Okay, that's for when you take it apart. Now the heads are good. I'm not expecting to replace the heads. There is the lower oil seal and the upper oil seal. So I'm not expecting to take the heads apart, which means I didn't need head gaskets. Uh, they gave me another oil filter, Oregon, because they had given me a different brand. And the bushing that goes inside. And so what I'm going to do to try to save this motor if that's the issue if there's an oil leak that you can't find a noise you can't find and when you push on your uh, see brain farts i gotta stop filming today when you push on your flywheel if it goes like this or it goes back and forth that means you have a wobble in your crankshaft so look on your particular machine and see if they sell a press fit um see i forgot what it was called bushing I'll try to remove it. Removing it's easy, putting it back in a little bit harder, but fairly easy. But unfortunately, I have to again remove the engine. There's only two bolts in the bottom right now. Unhook the rest of the wires. I've already pulled off the flywheel. I've taken the magnetos off. They're just sitting there. Uh, the fan, the top cover. That was so I could get to it and see what I could find. So I'm going to be taking the stator off cleaning this whole thing so we start fresh um i'm not worried about the carburetor or anything we have an oil leak problem and that's what we're going to fix so if you're interested in this kind of stuff this video is probably going to be about an hour long and there'll probably be two or three videos but we're going to completely completely pull this thing apart and see if we can find any damage to the pistons to the jugs See if we find any damage to the crank, to the cam, to anything. Um, finding, this is a commercial machine with a 15 and a half horse Kawasaki on it. Now, I'm not a fan of Kawasaki's, but it is what it is. Um, buying a new engine for this is, you know, 2,500 bucks, and I'm not doing that. 
and because of its size this is only a 34 inch cut i think uh see the deck stops right there at the side it's only a 34 inch cut it's great for getting into backyards and uh they only need a 15 and a half horse you can see there's not a lot of room on either side of this motor so flipping it up to a 20 horsepower twin uh, like this one on the Kawasaki, I think it's a 23, yeah, it's a 23 horse. But it's so much of a wider motor, uh, that's my Raptor, that I don't think it'll fit in there. So besides trying to find something used, trying to find something commercial, 15 and a half horse and twin cylinder. I refuse to put a single cylinder engine on this thing. You don't ever want to run a zero and put a single turn, single cylinder engine on it. Um, if you need to know why, let me down in the comments. I'll be glad to answer all your questions. Uh, a single cylinder 20 horse would fit on there perfectly easily as long as the shaft was the same dimensions, the same diameter and length. But I won't put a little riding mower 18 or 20 horse single uh, on this. It's not a commercial motor. Just ask me about it. Anyway, so we're going to see if we can save this 15 and a half horse Kawasaki um, and stop that crank wobble. So stay tuned. Okay, I have everything all set. I removed the throttle and the choke cable. I unplugged the wire harness. I, un I took off all the grounds, I took out the two bolts, I removed the fuel line. Uh, it's ready to be lifted out, and I'm going to put it on this. I, this is a special one that I have that I put a hole in the center so that the crankshaft could go down in it. And it will help it stand up better because I need to pressure wash this thing again before I start working on it on the bench. It just makes it so much nicer to work on stuff when it's fairly clean. Now, if I can get this thing off without getting myself all greased up. It's not that heavy. Like I said, it's only a 16 horse or 15 and a half horse twin. So it's not real heavy. And the cam, the crankshaft is down through that hole I was telling you about. And I just don't want to lose my bolt. So we're going to fire up the pressure washer and see if we can't clean some of this stuff off and I'll bring you back. All right, I'm working inside the shop on this one, uh, mostly because it's dark outside. But I'm going to start by taking off all the extremities and getting down just to the engine. Now, I don't have to do that. Um... A lot of things could probably stay on. I'm not going to take the heads off. But I noticed when I was pressure washing it that down here in the front there was an ex there's a lot of oil and stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the plastics. I'm going to take off the intake manifold, which is just a couple of bolts. I'm going to take off the magnetos. I'm going to take off the muffler. I'm going to take off all the tins and keep track of those and get this thing down i'm going to take the stator off and get this thing down to uh down to just the motor because i need to take this plate out make sure that's clean and get to everything so you don't need to see me take all that off when you take off tins make sure you take a picture of where they go or mark them somehow i always put the bolts back in exactly where they came from so i don't lose them and they're in the right spot because they're usually different sizes there's only four bolts that hold on the muffler two on each side um there's two on each side of the intake manifold that kind of stuff so just take a few pictures when you, when you take everything off i'm going to take off my my fuel pump um take a few pictures so you have a reference for when you put it back together that might be a crack right there. This might be a real short video. Hang on. You see that? Right there. Looks like it's cracked. Oh, man. Okay, I'm going to check into that. Well, that isn't the best 
thing I've ever seen, but honestly, it's kind of hard to tell if that's a crack or if it was just a trick of the light. It looks like a crack right there. Uh, and since the oil filter is what failed and shot the oil out, anything's possible. But this motor's coming apart anyway. Uh, and I'll tell you why. Because if it's not salvageable, if that really is a crack in the case and it cannot be fixed, I've got a buddy that welds aluminum. So if it can't be fixed and it can't be salvaged, uh, this thing's going to be torn apart and sold on eBay. The heads, uh, junk. So I'm going to go ahead and strip it apart anyway. And the next time you see it, it'll be down to just the case. And we'll go from there. All right. Well, it's the next day. Sun's out. Chains are blowing. And last night, I pretty much stripped everything off. I got all the tins off of it. Um, I took the stator off, the carburetor, the exhaust, the muffler, the manifolds, all that stuff. And we are down to just the motor. There's nothing left on it. And I'm using a new stand to get you guys higher off the ground so you can see. What I gotta do now is I have to get this pulley off. <clears throat> on the bottom is the PTO, which is over there. But I gotta get this pulley off. So I, what I'm gonna do is get my magic gun here, and I'm going to hook it up to the compressor. I'm going to use this bolt. You have to put the bolt in there. I'm gonna use the bolt. I'm gonna do this with some leverage here and see if we can't work that off. And if not, I'll have to get the torch out and heat it up. So let me get set up. Basically, like I said, I'm just going to put some pressure with the hammer, some leverage, and see if we can vibrate this thing off so we don't have to break out the torch. It's fun trying to keep this thing on and keep leverage when you only have two hands. But usually once you get a divot in there, try to have the bolt in as far as you can. Let's see if we can get lucky. heat it up I'll bring you back yeah it's just not working it's not doing anything so we're gonna have to heat it up and quench it when you heat it up the metal expands then when you quench it with water it shrinks and it'll break free the rust and whatnot now if you were doing this and you weren't doing anything but trying to get the pulley off for some reason you know the pulley was bad or broken and you had to replace it I would say you're going to ruin the oil seal which is directly above this pulley it's gonna get hot it's gonna get ruined so for the five or ten bucks if you have to do this you should change your oil seal um, otherwise you're not gonna hurt anything I'm basically just trying to loosen this thing up expand and contract so, I'm going to show you this in a little bit, speed it up. Alright. So, I heated it up for a while. Then I had to go get some water so I could quench it. And something to sort of kind of help me catch the water a little bit. Just so I don't wreck my tools underneath. So, just give it a good heating for five or six minutes. it a little bit 
I have to do it a couple times. And normally if you get it hot and it expands, then you cool it off with water, it contracts. And it leaves the rust that was connecting the two pieces. It leaves that in dust in the center. So let's see. Once was enough. Pardon the noise from the compressor. take a while I'll bring you back when it's off sorry okay we had to go old old school like ancient here like from the dark ages because I heated this thing and quenched it four times no good I decided that more than likely I'm just gonna replace this pulley because uh, it get it got bent up a little bit with this so I have been beating on it now for, oh, I don't know, 15 minutes. And you beat on it on one side, and then you turn it and beat on it on the other, and I've got penetrating oil in there. And finally, it's moving. It's coming off. So just we're going to be replacing this pulley, that's all. Not a huge deal. I took the oil fill release out so I wouldn't hit it. It's just plastic. And try not to hit your motor case, because then you'll really be screwed. So now it's a matter of keeping the crowbar on it and trying to keep pressure on it while you beat on it. And now we're about halfway up. There it is. Whew. Holy crap a moly, boy. And all that happens is that it gets gunked up and it starts to rust when the oil goes away and uh, don't lose your key Let's see if I got a screwdriver here when I get this key that's a kind of small key I would think it'd be longer but I guess it only has to be in there the key fits in there and it fits in the channel so what I'll do is I'll take my whizzer my whizzer wheel you can use sandpaper wire brush whatever clean all that up and clean up the inside of the pulley if you were going to salvage it now that pulley's pretty well bent up so i'm not even going to try i'm not sure whether this motor is even going to be worth fixing uh with the possible crack i found but the crack is in such a place that um it's here and it's kind of on the outside it is where a bolt goes through but i didn't see any oil leaking really so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop the case apart take everything out check the crank make sure the cranks not worn then we're gonna have to press out that upper bearing um, yeah it's not a bearing again I keep calling it a goddamn bearing 
It's not a press fitting. Anyway, we're going to press that out. And we're going to put the new one in and see if that takes care of the slop on the crankshaft. Which I'm hoping that it will. So I had to use uh, some straps to hold it down so I could beat on it. I built this table and it's all angle iron so I can get my hooks around it and do my thing. So anyway, that's getting the pulley off. Let's keep going. Okay. Now, I've already broken all these free. These are the case bolts and what you want to check is if they're all the same length or not as you're pulling them out because if they're not then you need to know where they go which hole they go in now, so far all those are all the same and like i said i already broke these free with a ratchet they were all good and tight this is a good commercial motor um, I really can't say anything bad about it. Like I said, the lady, I found out last night, uh, she has actually ten and a half acres. And she's been using this machine for six years to cut. And, uh, she has a stressful job. So she likes getting out and just cutting the grass now she says that she cuts about five acres one day and five acres the next so that it's not all the same time because this machine was only rated for two and a half acres so she says she cuts for an hour and a half two hours maybe and then she quits and you know does that after work when she gets home and it's just kind of cathartic for uh relaxing it's uh so she cuts the grass more than the average person because she does it because she loves to do it. So uh, down here in Florida, half the people only cut their grass once every two weeks. Sometimes it's once every three weeks. Uh, she was cutting twice a week. She's just going and cutting to cut. And uh, when I talked to the guys at the parts house yesterday and explained to them how the oil pump had failed, uh, they said that it was a new brand they were trying, you know, they're good people. I've never had an issue with the years that I've been dealing with them. <coughs> and, uh, they want to know what happened to this thing, obviously. And if it's, you know, they can't do anything about a bad oil pump, but I have a feeling, or a bad oil filter. Like I said, on the top is a, is a setup. You'll see it when I take it apart. And they're known to clog, and then it builds up pressure and finds a way out. Now, I know that that was leaking as well, uh, because of all the oil that was coming down the front of this beast. And I know that was leaking, because it was shooting out the side like a horror movie. But, basically, I think this is a good commercial machine. It's rated for a lot of hours. Oops. Okay, uh, I have to take... This governor spring off here. And I got to figure out the best way to get it off. So it's a spring right here in the center. So I'll bring you back in a minute when I get it off. Okay, I didn't really want to do it. <clears throat> but I'm going to have to take this mech off here. Uh, on this side, there's you can definitely see where the screw or the bolt was. It was about halfway. And this one only goes on one way. So... The best way to you can't get that spring off by itself because of the way it hooks around both of them so the only way to get it off is to take this off and this is all your linkages from your carburetor to your governor so I can take there's the spring in question that went there on the governor arm and <clears throat> the other two linkages are still there and this is the main linkage to the carburetor this, actually, this is your choke linkage, and this is your throttle. So I just want to make sure that I have a record of where that goes. And where that goes. And now I can put this to the side. 
and that's always fun when you have to take those off trying to put them back on it is always a pain in the butt however it has to be done now i promise you what will happen you can't get this off without taking this off so i'll pull the bottom case take this off and then when i go to put it back together you guys will be screaming at me saying you got to put the linkage on first and then i'm gonna have to take this off but again put your screws back your bolts back where you got them from that way you never lose them and you always know exactly which bolt goes where when i was a kid before my pop died uh, he died when i was young i would i would be working on stuff with him at age seven or eight in the garage which is where i started learning about this stuff and he would just hand me the bolts and i'd have to put them in a container <clears throat> and sometimes they'd get lost and sometimes it'd be two weeks before we got back to a project and then he'd have me out there trying to figure out where the bolts were which ones went where why there were some missing and he would uh He'd smack me around, let's just say. He wasn't the nicest of cats. And uh, he would get mean and I would get hurt physically because I didn't know where the bolts were or where they went fast enough while he's standing there, you know, trying to get stuff done. Oh, this seal's all blown up. Trying to get stuff done and very impatient, my pops. And I would feel the brunt of his pissed offedness. So I learned very quickly that if at all possible, when I was following him, behind him doing stuff, I would go behind him and try and remember where they went as quickly as I could, put them back, and then uh, I would know where everything was. That was before cameras with, you know, smartphones on your camera, where you could just take pictures and whatnot, but still... When I do it this way, I never lose a bolt, I never lose a screw, and I never have any leftovers unless I want to. <clears throat> so let's see if I can get you any closer here. I said I'm using the new stand today, which is actually an IV stand from a hospital with a clamp on that my buddy got me just so that I could get high enough to be able to see now i don't expect any problems you see I, inside of here let's see if i can get you to see better inside of here i'm not exactly expecting problems because and the oil has no metal sheen and it has has nothing in it it's it's black because i used old oil uh, to fill it up to find out where the leak came from. So don't worry about the black oil. Um, that's oil changes that I keep that gets recycled. And that's a good tip for you. If you have a situation where you have an oil leak and you need to find out where it is, why fill it up with fresh brand new oil at seven, eight, nine dollars a quart these days? Uh, use your old oil. You can strain it through a coffee uh, coffee filter if you want to make sure that there's nothing in it as long as it doesn't have any metal shavings in it and then you can fill up a machine and run it for half an hour an hour if you need to find out where all your oil leaks are and uh, just flush it out when you're done but I don't expect any any problems with anything else this thing ran for like I said 20 30 minutes and then I saw the oil leak then I filled it up after I pressure washed it and put it back on the machine uh, started it and ran it for uh, probably 45 minutes to an hour total in 20 minute increments until I finally saw the overflow of oil. Uh, it was all dry for a good 30, 40 minutes and then all of a sudden it came out like a curtain, like a lava flow. But I never heard any crazy sounds. Uh, I never heard anything that would lead me to believe that there were going to be any issues with the inside of the motor and I will end up pulling these valve covers off to see the top of the pistons. I don't think I'm going to pull. I don't think I'm going to pull the heads because I don't need to buy head gaskets at 12 bucks a piece 
just to take a look. Once the crank is out of the way and the cam is out of the way, uh, I'll be able to look at the inside of the jug and I can, I can look from a few different places. I can feel the piston right there. So I don't think there's going to be any damage on that far of it. Uh, and I'm not even sure why there would be damage on that press fitting, that bushing is the word I was thinking of, on the top of the crankshaft. This is the bottom, but on the top, remember we had the wobble. Uh, just normal wear and tear. So I'm literally taking this entire thing apart to make sure that there's no other damage anywhere on anything, that there's no broken pieces, that there's nothing missing. And uh, take a look at that crank and see if there shouldn't be any damage to it. The bushing should have worn well before the crank. Um, the bushing is made of sacrificial material, softer metal, and the crank is, is hardened. So I'm not expecting any issues there. So let me go ahead and make sure now there is, I can't exactly turn it real easy because I took off the pulley and there's not really anywhere to grab it. Wow. I, <laughs> the camera's in the way and I'm trying to move this thing so I'm going to move you I'm trying to if you turn the cam where it lines up where it's supposed to on the crank then it'll just kind of lift out and there we've got a washer I don't want to lose So now I'm trying to get this stupid thing to move. <clears throat> what am I what am I looking for? What do I need here? I need a screwdriver, but I need a flathead screwdriver. And no, I'm not editing this stuff down. This is real life. You want edited stuff with magic potions and makes everything work instantly, watch somebody else's channel. That's not reality. And I don't like to lie to my viewers. Gotta figure out. And that's what's going on. It's resting, all the weight's resting on the top of the crank. So I gotta get the weight off of it so I can spin it, so I can line it up. That's better. Now, can I turn it? Needs to go this direction. Come on. Why can't you just turn? There we go. Almost like you're caught on a compression stroke, but there's no, there's no, uh, in it. So there's no compression stroke what I'm talking about here what I'm looking at here so there we go give it a little wiggle and a little wobble and there's my cam the lobes on there I don't know if you can see what I'm looking at but what I'm looking at are the pointy edges to make sure that they're still pointy and uh this one looks a little bit worn, but it could be the trick of the light. But otherwise, it looks fine. There's your compression release valve right there. That's in working condition. Uh, when you go to start it, it actually bumps your exhaust valve and allows the pressure to leave real quick so that this will spin up to speed when they start it with the starter. And then as soon as it starts, centrifugal force pushes it out of the way so it doesn't bump the exhaust valve anymore. And uh, you don't have any issues. So I got to get. Uh, I want to mark where these came from. So I'm going to pull those out in a second. 
we have all of our weight and you see see how wobbly that that cam is now I understand that there's nothing else holding it except the pistons right now but that bottom is loose and uh, I don't know if there's a bearing in the top I don't know why I can't think of that word a bushing Well, that sure feels like a pressed bushing to me but who knows i'm not an engineer uh, that doesn't look too bad actually so what i'm gonna do here is on the connecting rods i'm going to pull the two bolts on the connecting rods i'm going to clean everything up so it's oil free I'm going to pull out my tappers, my pop-ums, whatever people want to call them. Uh, that's what actually hits your... Uh, <laughs> man, I hate being on camera. It's what actually hits your push rods against your valves. Okay. Now, you want to put those back in exactly where you took them off. So, I'm going to mark them 1, 2, 3, 4, and I'm going to put them somewhere where they're safe. And clean everything up then I'm going to take off the two bolts that hold each of the connecting rods on and I'm going to mark them as well so that I put those back on exactly the way I took them off you don't want to flip them over to put them back on and then we're going to be able to lift this crankshaft out and take a look at the part that means the most okay I didn't want to have to do it but on this twin cylinder <clears throat> The weights on the crank are on the opposite side of the connecting rods for the pistons and there's zero way to get it out of there so i'm going to have to take the heads off i honestly did not want to do that but 20 bucks worth of head gaskets it's fine i had to take the valve covers off anyway to reset the the uh, the valves not a big deal so I'm going to go ahead and take out the four bolts, pop the heads off, and then the connecting rods will come with the heads because I push the pistons down to where they're, where they're touching. So then I'll be able to back the connecting rods out far enough to pull the crank. And that literally means we've taken the entire everything off of this thing and taken it apart. But if you're going to do it, you might as well do it right, even for the extra few bucks. Okay. So I had to take this crossbar off and I had to take a picture so I knew which way it went on, whether it went down like a, like a smiley face or up like a frown. So I took a picture of that. I loosened the four bolts that hold El Hedorino on. These should all be the same size, but double check them as you take them out. Same size. I don't know if that's dry Loctite on that one or a little corrosion. I don't know. Doesn't matter. But we're successfully pulling the entire thing apart. And I don't think there's going to be any damage on the pistons. At least I'm hoping not. We're about to find out. I uh, probably should take those off real quick. Now that I think about it, and at this point, since I have to take everything apart, I'm probably, if there's any kind of scoring or anything in the jugs, I will probably put new over uh, new piston rings on, but. Right now, I'm not really planning on it. Uh, there's an extra bolt on the inside, which is kind of what I was thinking before I beat on it too much. So there's four bolts here, here, you saw me take them apart. And then there's one more here on the inside. Uh, 
your bench is never tall enough or never enough is it and that bolt is definitely longer so you won't put that in the wrong place on the inside and now Should be it, I believe. Oh, and my rubber mount is under my dirty rag. Those are my pushing rods. Now, in most cases, well, let me put it a different way. In the cheaper motors, when you're dealing with push rods, these pushy bitches, uh, one is steel. And one is aluminum and you can tell because the aluminum one has more of a brushed surface and the steel is darker and it's shinier but in a commercial machine both of these push rods should be exactly the same and they're both steel i never understood why they put aluminum ones in uh, the cheaper motors but in this case it's all lovely should be no issue with those uh, i will match them back to the cylinder they came off of but that's about the extent of it. As long as they're not bent, and if you want to know whether they're bent or not, just stick them together and roll them and see if there's any space in between the two or roll them on a flat surface, you'll be able to tell. So for the moment, um, I'm going to back, I'm going to turn that, and I want to push this pin in, and I want to see... If there's any kind of damage, I don't see any. What I'm looking for are score marks, uh, anything along those lines. And you'll be able to tell if you've watched my other videos. Um, I've pulled these apart before. And some of them, including that 80-year-old motor right there is completely scored in the piston and i have to, go to a machine shop to see if we can bore it out and get oversized rings and a, probably a sleeve to go inside of it but in this case is let me see if i can take you out of here and get you a little bit closer uh let me back this up like so and see if I can you see that that piston or that that jug looks fine and it feels fine and if I had better lighting in 17 hands I would try to show you all the way around but it looks good this little this little line at the top is is probably a spot where the upper ring was dragging just a little bit but what you'd be looking for are not scores that are around the jug you'd be looking for scores that go up and down along with the piston and this thing is clean I don't have a light on with the camera sorry so anyway we are looking good that's what I was hopeful of uh, also if you remember Earlier in the video, I said somewhere it looked like there was a crack, uh, possibly in the case, uh, was over here. But by here is where I thought it was. Uh, let me back you up. Sorry, I, I'm doing all this by myself, so I have trouble filming. I try to give you as much information as I can. I can't edit very well, I don't have a computer, and I don't have anyone to help me. And I'm still getting views. So I thought this was a crack right here, but when I took this apart and I looked on here, there's definitely no cracking going on. A bolt goes through there, so at best it would only be cracked on the outside there, which wouldn't hurt anything on the inside. And there's no cracks or anything missing, so that's not anything to worry about. Now that I have this head off, I don't want to get, I don't want to take the piston out any further than I absolutely have to. What I want to do is get the 
pressure off of it so I can turn it. And I want to push this out. Flat is where it would go. Now one ring is exposed, but I should be able to do the same thing to the other side. I'll get it out just a little bit further. And I should be able to finagle the crank up. So that's the whole point. That's why I took it out. So since I have to take this whole thing out anyway, I'm going to push the piston out. We might as well take a look at it. Nothing is ever easy. It doesn't want to come out. I have one, one ring exposed. Uh, so I'm going to work on this a bit. I'm going to get this piston out and see if I can't show you what the inside looks like. And unfortunately, I'm just going to have to take the heads off and the pistons out to get this damn crankshaft out.